Hey, 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 somebody. How are you doing? It's been a minute. It looks like forever since the last time I was here. And I'm so sorry. I had promised to share something as soon as I did my last broadcast. But I wasn't able to because of many causes. But hey, I'm here right now with something that the Holy Spirit has dropped into my spirit. And I believe that it will be of benefit to you and I. I'm also learning. And I believe it will help each one of us. Holy Spirit, we surrender this time to you. We ask of you to come and share with us what you have for us. As God, I share this word you've given me. I pray that you will dissect it into small, small pieces. That each one of us will grab something that will be beneficial to our lives, God. And that will make us to live our lives better and purposefully in a way that brings honor and glory to your name. Anoint my lips, O oh Lord, Holy Spirit, I pray for your wisdom and knowledge, O oh God, that I will not speak of my own, but what you've deposited into my spirit by the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I honor and glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so very much, people. I first want to appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for subscribing into my YouTube channel. Thank you for your support. I really, really, really love you. And if you're new here, kindly subscribe and ring the bell so that whenever we have something coming on, you will be on board and you will not be left out. I really appreciate the love and the support. I will never take it for granted. May the Lord richly, richly bless you. Thank you for all of you who've been sharing. Those of you who've been giving me con comments. I am really, really grateful and I thank God for each one of you. You are just but a blessing into my life. So today I have something that I want to share with us that I've titled The Enemy Within. The Enemy Within. And just before you start looking at the people around you and thinking that is the enemy, eh, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you, you, yourself, you, 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 as much as I'm talking to myself. I'm talking about the enemy within, the enemy that is inside us, the enemy that defiles us knowingly or unknowingly. And the enemy I'm talking about is the enemy called me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. And that equates to selfishness. Now, I will do this using the scriptures. There are several scriptures in the Bible that um, I will highlight. Basically, what I'm talking about today is about selfishness. The reason why I have picked this scripture is that out of my own observation and interaction with most people, I've realized that most people are having bad kind of life, are having unfulfilled life, are having what I would call a turmoil or a roller coaster of life that seems to be getting from worse to worse. And it's simply because they have incubated so much selfishness within them and that uh, disorders the way God created our lives to be and everything that disorders, the moment we live in a disorderly manner, then we shall never be fulfilled, we shall never be contented, we shall always be bitter, we shall all, always be angry. Did I want to say always? Gosh. You know, we shall have a life that is not, well cut out we shall think somebody else is responsible for what i've not gotten or for this that or the other but in the bottom line the problem is not the person but the problem is the enemy within i've called them mr and mrs selfishness or auntie and uncle selfishness how about that works well sounds better right so we're gonna call them auntie and uncle selfishness that at all me, we call me, myself, and I. It is the enemy we think. I read the scripture. My first scripture is Mark 12, 30 to 31. The Bible says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And my interest is in the second part of it, which the second is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no commandment greater than this so we've had and we've known probably that love is the greatest commandment and every time we disorder that commandment everything else loses its taste and life 
just take a different turn altogether and we are not able to enjoy life as we ought to enjoy because that order is already defiled. So my question to you today, because I still want to bring you to where I am and I know most of you are already wondering what's wrong with yourself, the enemy will win. Do you love yourself? Do you love yourself? Do you really, 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 really love yourself? Because what I've discovered is that what we call self-love is not actually self-love, but it is selfishness. What we tell ourselves that I love me, it's selfishness because it's all centered about what benefits me. It's all centered on what makes me happy. It's all centered about me, myself, and I. And that is not love. That is selfishness. That is selfishness. Why am I saying that? Because in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8, it stipulates well to us what love is. Love is patience. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. But love never fails. So do you love yourself? Because when Jesus commanded us to love others as we love ourselves, it's that we dispense to ourselves patience, kindness, we do not envy, we do not boast, we are not proud, we do not dishonor others, we are not self-seeking, we are not after ourselves. And unfortunately, most of us, what we call love is self-seeking. It dishonors others, it devalues others, it demeans others, it looks at others as if they don't deserve. It esteems others lower than ourselves. We always want to get the best at the expense of someone else. We use people instead of loving them. Yet Jesus told us, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And your neighbor is not just that person whom you share, I mean, quarters with at home or you, have, you stay in the same apartment or in the same flat, blah, blah. Your neighbor is that person, that person that is right there with you right now be it in school at work home wherever you are that person next to you is your neighbor so are you able to love them the way you love yourself do you love yourself the enemy within the enemy within now the problem with selfishness is it makes us feel like everyone else owes us but we owe no one nothing it makes us feel like we came to the world to get, but we never came to the world to give. It makes us feel like uh, we someone owes us something that they need to give us. And I think I've said before in my one of my broadcasts that we found the world here and we're going to leave it here. What matters is the impact we're going to make when we are still here because no one is lasting here. We are all on a journey and we shall leave when the day comes. The world owes you nothing, but you owe the world everything that you can give into it to make it a better place for others, for others who will come and for others already here. But because of selfishness, it has always to be me, myself, and I. Anti-selfishness, uncle selfishness, that's where the problem is. So you forever realize that you're always either angry, you're always bitter, you're never contented, you're never grateful because nothing is good enough to make you be grateful. Nothing is enough for you to make you cheer up. No one does anything that satisfies you. Mr. Mrs. Selfishness. That is the enemy we think. You see those people we call nurses. They, they have graduated with PhD masters with selfishness that's a topic for another day i don't want to talk about nurses today i'll talk about them another day but if you're in that category the problem is the enemy within the enemy within i go back to mark 12 
verse 31. Love your neighbors, you love yourself. How much do you love yourself? How much do you love yourself? And the way you love yourself, is it self-seeking? Does it boast? Is it proud? Because if it is that, then that is not love. That is selfishness. We must learn to love the God kind of way of love. Otherwise, we are going to have miserable life. And why am I saying this? Because love is such a great force that in fact the world we live because of love. We are because of love. We are lifted because of love. Everything in life revolves ab around love. And already I know someone's mind is thinking about love. The lovey-dovey kind of love that you feel towards someone. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the genuine, sincere, authentic love that you want to see everyone happy, that I will go an extra mile for someone, that I'll do something that will make someone else's life better, that I, I will not always think that I should be the one to get this first. I can also let the other person get it first. I will not always think that I'm the one who is entitled to this. I will let someone else do it and I will still be grateful. I will be rejoicing with those around me. I will be happy with my friends when they make a step ahead and I will not start saying mm -hmm. I will not be that kind of a person. The moment you find yourself always folding your lips badly towards others and quite selfishness you they change because if you don't my darling life will be so horrible for you it will be so horrible for you and unfortunately um you don't need to be what did i want to say um we don't need to lay hands on you to remove selfishness you just need to read the word of god and start operating by it you just need to read this word and start operating by it because this is our daily living manual if you're not living by it sit at life is better let me come to you philippians 2 3 the bible says i will i will read two or three versions but it has many versions so that you will not think that it is Teresa who is just cooking things in her head the bible says in philippians 2 3 do not do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain concept rather in humility value others above yourself that is the niv version let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or concept but in lawlessness of mind let each esteem others better than self i love that bit esteem others better than self that is new king james version don't be selfish don't try to impress others be humble thinking of others thus as better as yourself how many times do you do that most of us always think we are the best. The rest are not. The rest do not measure up. And that's how we even treat the people around us. Just look at how you go treating people. Like the way you treat the watchmen and cleaners at your workplaces. Just think of how you treat that tea girl. Just think of how you treat the cleaner. Just because you found them cleaning your washroom. And you're thinking they are so useless. You think you're so better because you're madam or go see you or whoever you are and you you just treat them with praise the lord that is new new um nlt version do nothing out of selfish ambition or empty pride but in humility consider others more important than yourself that is Beren bible study and you can read more other versions of the bible the good thing about reading many versions of the bible you get a better revelation and understanding of the word of god what am i saying if life will have to change we have to change our view old of especially the people around us and how are we going to start that is by inculcating the scripture in Mark 12, 31. Love others as you love yourself. And you go to the very first question, do I love myself? And how do you love yourself? Because if you, the way you love yourself does not match up to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8, then you still don't fit in that fold. You're still living with the enemy within.
uncle auntie selfishness or mr and mrs selfishness or if you so like manager selfishness ceo selfishness whatever you wanna call it but that is the enemy within the sooner we deal with that enemy within we're going to have better lives i'll have in one of my episodes that i will address selfishness as a monster because it's a monster that kills a lot of things selfishness destroys home selfishness destroys churches selfishness destroys marriages relationship destroys workplaces destroys greater things because the moment me myself and i becomes the master then we are in for a shock and you can even see it even in our politicians when someone is just thinking about me myself and i it does not matter how many people are suffering as long as i'm getting what i want uncle and selfishness you're gonna deal with that and we need to ask the holy spirit to help us to deal with the enemy within us so that we can live fulfilling lives we can live lives that brings glory and honor to the name of the lord we need to ask the holy spirit to remove the enemy that is living inside us that is causing us so much pain so much trouble anger and bitterness a selfish person is always bitter they are always angry they always think others are after them i mean you they will if you post something they will think you're talking about them and i have them i have quite a number of them around me and i i pity them but sometimes i'm thinking how do i even help you the problem you're having is the enemy within you i believe that you've gotten something small even if you've not gotten everything if you forget everything that i've said do not forget mark 12 31 the second one is love your neighbors you love yourself and ask yourself the question do i love myself does what i term as loving myself match up to first corinthians 13 for it if it does not my friend dismantle and start all over again then do not forget philippians 2 3 do nothing out of selfishness but rather in humility value and esteem others better or important than yourself if we just imagine for a moment with me if you are seated in a circle of 10 people and all of us looks at the rest better than myself we will seek for the good of them we will want the best for them we will not room among them we're not going to backbite them because i see them better as myself i'm not going to be envious about them because i seek for their welfare can you imagine if we all did that the world will be an awesome awesome place for us to live in but hey it's never too late we can change the narrative and that change begins with you and i and until next time this is your girl Teresa aka god's girl on assignment and i believe that i've delivered my assignment for today so it's up to you to pick what is yours make sure it works and helps you to become a better person and until next time god bless you i love you so so very much and i'm praying for you mm.